editing pictures with AI part two. So a little over a year ago, I did a video editing my pictures with Luminar AI. Well, hey, we're back here for part two, but now we're going to use Luminar Neo. So a uh, shout out to Skylum for sponsoring this video. So this is a showcase. I am showing off their new Neo software with some really cool updates. So it'll be less opinions and more of just, hey, showing what this powerful program can do. Hey, how are you? Uh, my name is Sarah Dichi, rhymes with uh, Peachy. That felt weird, like I was touching a booty. Anyways, so you might have seen a video already about Neo, but there is something new. There is a new feature, the portrait background removal feature that I am just so excited about. So I'm actually going to be able to show you that in today's video. But before that, if you're a little confused, the biggest difference with Luminar Neo compared to Luminar AI is you have access to layers and that offers a ton of flexibilities when it comes to stacking presets, looks and effects. It also has additional features like AI based masking, which is crazy. It just scans all of the things in your image and it automatically identifies things like the sky, buildings, flora, trees, and grass and stuff. And then you can make adjustments based on those specific tags. Psh, mind blowing. You can straight up just remove power lines. Crazy. And Neo features many more cool things and also including a lot of the picture editing that you get in Luminar AI, like the portrait tools, the face, skin, and body settings. But let's focus focus on this new feature, the portrait background removal feature that is now available. So let's test it out. And I'm just going to give you a little preview here. Look how fast it just removes the background. I'm going to zoom in here. Look at the edges. They are so clean. Now, some other programs are trying to do this, but I always default to manually doing it. I grab my little pin selection tool and I go bloop, bloop, bloop around my subject. And that's how I get a very clean look for my thumbnails. This is crazy because this is like better than me manually doing it. It looks like so crisp. And if you can see around my hair, you don't get that ambiguous blur where it's trying to figure out, hey, where do we cut off, you know, the flyaways or how do we sculpt the hair? Okay, so I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's rewind a bit, take some of these pictures that we're going to be editing today. And I'll let you know why this feature is actually super powerful for my workflow. Well, <laughs> I'm a very irresponsible YouTuber and probably the uh, most irritating step for me is well, making thumbnails, worrying about titles, you know, the most important part of being a YouTuber. <laughs> I follow a lot of YouTubers on Twitter and there was this thread the other day um, of YouTubers talking about well, thumbnails, and Thomas Frank basically had the screenshot of all of the thumbnail faces that they have shot, edited, and have ready day of. Uh, it's just him posing in different faces. And I'm like, why have I never thought about that? That's so smart. But at the same time, I was like, I don't wanna sit there and have to mask me out, you know, a hundred different times. So I'm like, oh, this is actually the perfect scenario for something like Luminar Neo. And not only that, but a lot of these AI features are not only going to make this easier faster. You know, I'm not going to have to sit there and manually do all of this. The whole point of this program is it's just, you know, one slider, one click, but it's also going to be kind of fun. So we're going to take some shots against, well, just a normal background where hopefully it'll actually be pretty easy to remove me from this background. Um, but a lot of times what I do is just take a picture at my desk. And so there's a brick wall. There's uh, a lot of things behind me and other programs that I use to automatically try to cut me out. They just, well, can't cut it. And so we're going to try it against uh, something like that as well, because that's probably more practical if you're more out and about running a gun, running in a gun, uh, talking, and you want to swap out that background. So let's, let's do it. Nothing left to do it, but to do it or something like that. Okay, so we are back to editing. And what is crazy with that first example that I showed you, um, I just very quickly, because again, we have layers in Luminar Neo, hopped in, oh, I hopped into the flow as if I was making my last thumbnail that took me a solid like 30 or 40 minutes. And like, it took me maybe 90 seconds. I basically found a nice filter that allowed my face to pop. It kind of smoothed me out again, all with one click, remove the background, added the picture that I used in the thumbnail, just kind of roughly layered me over that. With thumbnails, you want everything to be very clear and crisp, even at a very small resolution. 
So if you see me like zooming out a lot, that's because, hey, I wanna see what people are seeing on their tiny phone screen, right? Or in a YouTube homepage. And so making those pictures, not just my face, but even the background pop sometimes is important. And having those just very easy one slider things like enhanced structure, dramatic, it just helps bring out that clarity. And boom, I basically had the same thumbnail, if not a better thumbnail in such a small fraction of the time. It makes me silly that I haven't been using this sooner. When Skyla made Luminar Neo, I don't think they're exactly thinking like, oh, this is gonna be the perfect software to make YouTube thumbnails. That's just the example I'm giving, but like, uh, it kind of is. Okay, so it's one thing to have a seamless background. It did a really good job with that, but I'm gonna go in and grab a picture, like a normal picture, and see how the background removal performs with that. Because that's something I do all the time, just cutting myself out of either screenshots from videos where, again, the background is, you know, kind of more busy. Um, and so we're gonna do that right now. Ooh, okay, see, this one will be interesting um, because against the seamless, we were shooting at, I think, like, F4 or we were stopped down quite a bit. This one, we're not stopped down at all. We're at like F1.4. And as you can see, the edges are kind of like blurring into the background of my head. So uh, also my hair is like the same color as the background. So let's cross our fingers here. And also my skin, oof. I haven't been sleeping very well. Um, your girl's just been struggling getting organized. So my skin isn't looking that great either, but hey. We have an app for that. So we could go immediately into the portrait face uh, features, but I'm just gonna hit up the presets because a lot of times uh, these presets have that face magic built into them. So let's let's go that featured face. That's what I used on my last one. I really like this close-ups collection. I mean, it just, psh, that already looks so good. This is like a cute Instagram picture. I might post this. You know what? I am gonna post this. Follow me on, on the gram, guys. The fact that I can just brighten up your face without you having to go in there and, and masking it, it's just again, one slider is, I do that a lot, again, with thumbnails. <laughs> it already smoothed out my bumps a bit, but I'm going to hopefully just fully erase them here. Oh, okay, that was easy. And again, all the edits are stored over here, so if you go to the edits tab, and then you say turn on and off, you can see what we did there. Okay, sorry, I got so distracted, actually just, editing the photo that I forgot the whole point. Okay, let's see how it does with removing a background where the color of my hair is almost exactly the same as the color of the background and we're not as sharp around the edges here. Okay, so we're going to go to layer properties, masking, portrait background. Ooh, it's doing its magic. I love that animation. It's so beautiful. Here we go, remove. Moment of truth. Okay, so I'm confusing it a little bit because I also have that desk in the foreground, so I'm not just removing the background. So I think this isn't necessarily for this use case, but hey, you can still make it work, and this is where I can kind of teach you about the refinement tools. Okay, so once you click remove background, you can go in here into the refinement brush tools, and there's basically three different categories. You have the transition, so that is the white part in between your object and your background. You have the the object, which is your orange selection, and then you have background, which is blue. And you can come in here and refine those things. So it cut off a little bit of my hair up here on the top section, so I'm going to use the object tool and just select more of the object. I'm not going to the edge of the object, but just to where there's a little bit of room on the edges of the object. And as you can see there, my hair is filling back in. And then next, I'm going to click the transition, and I'm basically going to smooth out the transition from the object to the background. Uh, and so that will be occupied by the white space. And then selecting the background tool and again, resizing uh, my selector here, I can say, hey, all of this in the blue is the background. And as you can see, you don't have to be super precise with it. You're kind of just in broad strokes telling it, hey, this is the object, this is the background. And the AI does the rest of the magic. So we even have the scenario that isn't ideal looking pretty good. Good. Okay, so let me go in here and add a different background. Okay, so I downloaded just a random image of a table off the internet. There is me in a CB2 catalog. Okay, so if you can't tell, uh, I'm just having way too much fun. I'm gonna come back to this original one and you can actually make your eyes bigger, which is again, another thing that is so great for thumbnails and I just wanna test it out real quick. Oh, 
this is ha okay actually though I, again the theme of this program is you can adjust all these things without specifying hey these are my eyes with a mask it just knows right that's the ai magic working but it's so funny uh, i just paid a thumbnail editor recently to see if they can make my thumbnails look more poppy and they were doing all of these things they were changing the color of my eyes they were making uh, my face just more intense with the enhance and stuff and now i'm like ooh. I have the secret now. Wow, all I needed this entire time to be a better YouTuber is just Luminar Neo. I also love how I was like, I won't give any opinions since this is a sponsored showcase video, but opinions are, are slipping by because I'm having a lot of fun. I'm sorry, sue me. Don't sue me. Eye enhancer, what does eye enhancer do? Yeah, it just makes it pop more. Improve eyebrows? Ooh, Luminar doing my makeup for me? Okay this part in large eyes i wonder if it'll work with glasses on <gasps> okay is that not a freaking youtube face if you ever saw one look at this before after before after before after oh my god Okay, and what's unique about Neo is again you can you can stack these effects. So we have the face AI That's what we did right there But if we go back to the tools again, we could just do it again and we could just like make my eyes even even bigger Okay <laughs> Oh my gosh, I look like I, uh, I look like that guy from uh, oh my gosh What is that movie with like the big glasses and it's a gif and he's like Another portrait feature that is unique to Neo is something they call relight. It's essentially like adding a flash after the fact uh, to your subject after you take the picture. Uh, and then just like you can remove the background, you can automatically uh, add some more bokeh into your shot so you can add that blur into the already existing background as well. You can hopefully understand by now just the possibilities, the possibilities. Let me know what you thought of this. I think I was kind of just like surprised and delighted myself. It is so cool to see all of these features now up and running in Luminar Neo. If you're curious, if you like what you saw today, check out my link in the description below and hey, just, just give it a try. You can do so many crazy things with this program and I'm super stoked to see the future of it because I could definitely see it bridging the gap and kind of being the one-stop shop for both Lightroom, editing images, adding presets, doing light editing, but also also the more heavy duty stuff that you would do in Photoshop, like all of the masking. It's kind of like all of that in one. And then I would just then take that one step further and love to see some of the other basic stuff that you have in Photoshop, like adding drop shadows. That would be so clutch to see in a future update. But until then, hey, uh, this is gonna keep me busy. And if you already use those programs that I just mentioned, Luminar actually has plugins for Lightroom, Photoshop, and even the Photos app on Mac. So again, check out my link in the description below. Thanks for tuning in and hey, there's nothing left but to, well, stay peachy. Okay, bye.